From a show of hands, who here already snapped that they were at this event on Snapchat or Instagram? How many people clicked that they were going or interested in this event on the Facebook event? Just from those simple actions alone, you have already started influencing others. Posting on your Instagram story tells everyone where you currently are. Confirming your attendance on the Facebook event notifies people on your newsfeed ahead of time that you're planning on attending this event. With that, with those two simple actions alone, you have already started influencing others and you've reached an audience of about 500 to 1,000 people if you're the average social media user. Social media has completely revolutionized the way that we receive news, updates, or any sort of information in a way that's fast, concise, and arguably more effective. As the world is adjusting to the impact that social media has, a new breed of individuals have come to the spotlight, influencers. Influencers, by definition, is an individual who has the power to affect purchase decisions because of their knowledge, authority, position, or relationship to their audience, uh, typically in a particular niche. Perfect examples of influencers are celebrities, like the Kardashians, Selena Gomez, Cristiano Ronaldo, The Rock, and Beyonce. Then there are other influencers, like Huda Katan, Cameron Dallas, Michelle Lewin, that gain their fame through social media. In 2017, the influencer category was worth $1 billion, and many industry reports are predicting that it's going to go up to $20 billion in 2020. So what does being an influencer entail? Seems kind of simple, right? You take a picture, post a picture, throw some hashtags, get a lot of likes, get additional sponsored content, rinse and repeat. From the outside, it seems like it's a very easy life to get paid to do nothing but take pictures. What people don't see behind the cameras is actually the amount of work that's dedicated to one post, as well as the hustle to grow in a market that's overly saturated. There's a lot of glamour and perks to what we call this quote unquote easy lifestyle, but there is still a lot of work that's to be done that most people don't see. As my bio shows and as Alan has said, I don't have a digital or social media marketing background. I studied accounting, finance, and management information systems, which resulted in a job in consulting out of college, and now I work in tech. The most I know about marketing is probably my introduction to marketing class that I took freshman year. However, I actually have been involved in the social media game since 2007. I started off in 2007 as a YouTuber, where I was directing and producing music videos every two weeks for eight years. And then in the later half of my YouTube career, I also joined Tumblr, where I was an original content creator and had a lot of engagement through likes and reblogs. After a while, I decided that I needed to put these two accounts on pause because I wanted to focus more on my career and my nonprofit and ultimately never picked up these accounts again. Then. A little more than a year and a half ago, I decided to bring my love of food to social media through Instagram, where I am currently growing it as a food influencer. So what does a food influencer do? If you or any of your friends are at a restaurant, most likely you guys are going to take out your phone, take a picture of the food, and share it on your stories, right? Instagram food bloggers, they do the same thing, except a little bit more focused and kind of extra. A lot of us carry a portable light with us everywhere we go. I used to carry a brick, but I was embarrassing my friends a little bit too much, so I had to downsize a little bit to a little smaller light. We whip out our lights whenever the food comes and then start taking pictures, getting creative with setups, angles, and whatever possible to make the picture look as good as, as, good as it tastes. And that's why we call it hashtag food porn. We take the pictures, post it, share some information about the food as well, and then share it with our followers on a recurring cadence. If successful, restaurants would then reach out to us and let us try their foods, send us their products, or uh, participate in their various marketing campaigns. We continue this and um, change it up a little bit as we plateau in growth, algorithm changes, or we want to just try something new. At my account's current status, I am considered a micro-influencer. A micro-influencer is what we call the normal people, but they still command a following and presence in their space. 
the number of followers that constitute a micro-influencer varies per social media platform and individual's definitions, but I would say it's typically someone between 2,000 to 50,000 followers. On the other hand, you have macro-influencers. Macro-influencers command a much larger following than that of a micro-influencer. But there is one huge misconception, is that micro-influencers micro do not have the power to affect purchase decisions like that of a macro-influencer. Oftentimes, people associate the credibility of an account with a number of followers. In digital marketing, that is a grave mistake to make if you're figuring out how to allocate your marketing um, campaign budget. With the development of bots and fake accounts, it's really hard to start gauging whether or not the followers and likes are real and getting a full understanding of what an influenced audience really is like. That's why the shift has been moved over to engagement rate instead of, instead of followers. So, engagement rate. Studies show that micro-influencers actually have 60% higher engagement rate than that of a macro-influencer, which makes sense, right? We have a smaller audience, so it's easier for us to respond to everything. But getting to that good engagement rate still takes a lot of time and effort. In the food influencer community, uh, a bunch of us gathered together, and not just in New York City, but around the world. And we formed this community where we can communicate with each other, share, and help each other grow. We formed these things called engagement pods. So engagement pods is a group of influencers, about 10 to 20 each, where we share our latest posts with each other so we can help engage on it. However, there are rules in place to make sure that there's fair treatment for all, food, for all the food influencers. So before sharing your own content, you must also engage on all the posts prior to that. So what does that mean? That means you have to like and comment five words or more, not including emojis. Comments with five words or more count towards an engagement rate. However, comments with less can actually be detected as spam or bots by Instagram. I would say typically every influencer is in between five to 10 engagement pods. I'm personally in seven of them, and it actually takes up the most amount of time compared to anything I do for my Instagram. I work a very busy job that starts at 9 a.m. to very, very late at night, depending on my travels and my workload. Typically, I would say in total, it takes about one to two hours each day to catch up on my pods. And the only time I can really find to do this is my morning commute, when I'm going to get lunch, or right before bed when I finish all my work and activities. Outside of engagement pods, we also have to make sure that we are interacting with our own newsfeed, so making sure our newsfeed is getting attention, as well as exploring hashtags. So sometimes if you see some foodies, you'll just see them mindlessly liking pictures while they're multitasking and doing something else. Engagement rate is crucial to growth and getting sponsorships, but especially hard to do when you're working a full-time job that requires your attention 24-7. Once you have that good engagement rate, then that means all the sponsorships start flowing in, right? Not necessarily. As I stated earlier, uh, this is a very saturated market. Even though you have a very healthy following and a good engagement rate, sometimes it's hard for businesses to find you because there's so many accounts similar to you. In the food influencer community, we have these agencies like Palette Connect, Zipkick, Best Food Feed, et cetera, and what they do is they connect restaurants and businesses to influencers to participate in these large campaigns. So for example, a restaurant will post a campaign, influencers will sign up, then restaurants will select their influencers to attend. So campaigns can be anything from trying a new flavor of ice cream to testing out a brunch menu at a new restaurant. In exchange for the free food, the businesses ask us to post Instagram stories, or other kind of post that's tagging their business and giving them some visibility in what they do. It's really, really great visibility for the, uh, various, for the various restaurants and businesses, but it does take a lot of time. I would say on average, if I'm not traveling and I'm local to New York City for a week, I can get up to five events per week. And each event takes about one to three hours each. It's very time, while it does have a lot of content that I can share later on, it does have, it does take a lot of time and effort to make sure you get the right Insta stories as well as the right posts. Another thing that I like to do every now and then is do a giveaway to reward my followers, to thank them for sticking around with a partnering restaurant. 
uh, for example. It's actually a giveaway I'm doing right now, it's live. But what I'll do is I'll partner with a restaurant and then we're going to offer them a meal, a dinner for two, for X amount of dollars. The only rules are you have to follow my Instagram, follow the restaurant's Instagram, like the picture, and tag your friends. After a set time, we then, I then go into the comments and randomly select a winner and then give them the prize. It's a great treat for my followers and it gives a lot of visibility to the restaurant as well. However, this partnership doesn't happen right away. In order for me to even be able to create a partnership, I actually have to do a lot of cold outreach as well as networking. So um, to create a rapport with the restaurant before I can even ask for any sort of partnership. So that includes going on a restaurant's Instagram, engaging with all their posts, networking with the social media manager, and developing, creating relationships with multiple restaurants at once. So kind of similar to what you guys do in college, right, where you're networking 24-7 to get that job, I had to do the same thing as a micro-influencer to create these partnerships with the restaurants. While sponsor post is great and at an influencer at any level wants to strive for, it doesn't happen overnight, and it requires a lot, a lot of work in order to create a partnership before you can receive any of the perks. As anything in life, nothing good comes easy. As I've stated before, it's a very saturated market. There's a lot of work that's required for us to grow. I've highlighted on just some points, being you know, the value of a micro-influencer, getting a good engagement rate, obtaining sponsorships. But there are actually a lot more big things that are also involved in order to make it big. What I'm saying may seem a little bit daunting at first, but don't get me wrong, there are a lot of perks and rewards for this lifestyle. First and foremost, free stuff. Uh, for the past couple of months, I actually haven't had to pay for most of my food, which is pretty awesome. I had the ability to travel and try new restaurants at different cities, not just in New York City, but around the world as well. And one of the main reasons why I have a passion for food is because I think food is truly a great way to bring cultures and people together. For um, any time I get invited to a restaurant, um, usually I'm going to meet a bunch of other food influencers, or I get to bring a plus one. Through food influencing, I was able to really develop and expand my network. As a result, I've made a lot of friends. I found a roommate. I have someone who is, uh, I have a lot of people who are there to support me in my career, and I have a huge community to fall back to where um, we can all essentially share and talk about the life of an influencer. The life of a foodie influencer is quite, um, it can seem quite glamorous and seem kind of easy, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and it's not for everyone. The next time you're considering adopting this lifestyle or you meet someone who is currently living this, just remember the amount of work it takes for one post in the house to grow in this overly saturated market. It takes a lot of work to get there, but nothing, nothing good comes easy. Thank you.